Thank you, Angie. We'll get to that club. And thank you, everyone. This is just fantastic to be here. As I look in, I didn't realise we we're going to have all the people up on the other floors. It's fantastic to see you all and people behind me as well. This is really, really brilliant. I think this is the second biggest audience we've had here since the Queen, the late Queen, opened the building. So it is really, really fantastic to be here. It's great for me to be in Manchester. It's <laughs> I have to confess, it is the first time I've been here since a particular football game last week. Uh, so I'm going to pass the usual Arsenal jokes today. Uh, let's just say, uh, Lucy, the fight goes on. Uh, and actually, that we can learn something from Arsenal um, and from Man City. Uh, bear with me. Because all the way to the end of the season, the objective for both teams is the same. Win the league. A goal that can be achieved only by teamwork, excellence, a blend of skills, different people pulling together on and off the pitch, contributions big and small. Tactics may change, Lucy, um, but the pursuit is single-minded. And the focus, the ambition, the mission, that never changes. Don't worry, I'm not going to turn up to Parliament in a tracksuit, but <laughs> I, I do, do believe Britain needs to clear a sense of purpose and that the way we run our country can be more like a brilliant sports team pursuing victory. The government can be driven forward by clear, focused objectives. And that this approach is vital for Britain to get its confidence, its hope and its future back. And that's what I'm here to set out today, how a new mission-driven Labour government will end sticking plaster politics and, in doing so, get Britain back on its feet. I will never accept that this country is destined for decline, that our best days belong to the past. Success is all around us. It just needs direction. People have huge ambitions for their community. They just need a government that matches their ambition. And I, I think there is a yearning to come together, to be part of something bigger. That appetite, it's always been there. In all our big moments in our history, the creation of the NHS, during the pandemic in spades, the passing of the late Queen last year. A pride and a purpose that we have to unlock to drive our country forward towards a better future. Now, all around the world, countries are gearing up for an almighty race for the opportunities of tomorrow. Britain must be on the start line, not back in the changing room tying the laces. Some nation is going to lead the world in offshore wind. Why not Britain? Some nation will create the first generation of quantum computers. Why not Britain? Some nation will design medicines personalised to match our unique DNA. Why not Britain? <laughs> Why not? Because sticking plaster politics holds us back. Pick any of the current problems energy security, productivity, immigration, we could be here all day. But it wouldn't matter. The pattern is always the same. Distracted by the short-term obsessions that fixate Westminster, held back by a cynicism which uses low trust in politics as an excuse to narrow our ambitions, blinker to the potential of an active government setting the direction, we lurch from crisis to crisis always reacting, always behind the curve. A sticking plaster, never a cure. <laughs> Just look at the NHS. For years we've had winter crises. Every year, the same panic, the same despair. 
This is life and death, and yet the government has never found a long-term solution. Sticking plaster politics. The fundamentals never fixed. Not one crisis, but a cluster of crises that compound each other, combined to send a nation in a downward spiral. The evidence that this has happened to Britain is all around us. The only country in the G7 still poorer than it was before the pandemic. The worst decade for growth in two centuries. Seven million on waiting lists and rising. You don't see this everywhere. And, and look, it's easy to blame it all on the Tories. But some of these problems go back decades. Others are clearly aggravated by events, and I won't criticise this government unfairly for the consequences of the war in Ukraine. But over 13 years, by their actions and, crucially, their inactions, the Tories have made Britain's problems deeper, longer-lasting and more painful than any of our competitors. Seriously. Ask yourself this, do I feel better off today than I did 13 years ago? What's the list of achievements they can rattle off, the legacy of our country that they can be proud of? And the idea that the people who created the mess around us are the right ones to clean it up, forget it. They're devoid of ideas, they're clapped out, they're divided, too weak to challenge the vested interests in their party which hold Britain back. Too closed in on themselves to think big for our country. Britain needs leadership with ambition, belief in the possibilities of the future, hunger to take on the big challenges. This is the case for change. A new government and a new way of governing. Britain needs both. With Labour, Britain will get both. <laughs> uh, uh, and that's what today is about. A Britain that gets its future back. And I'll tell you how. We're going to transform the way Britain does its business from top to bottom. We'll modernise central government so it becomes dynamic, agile, strong and, above all, focused. More open to expertise, to partnership with business, unions, communities and civil society. Mission-driven government. A relentless focus on a clear set of priorities an answer to the widespread call to fix the fundamentals, a long-term plan to unlock our pride and our purpose, a profound statement of intent, mission-driven government. In some ways, it's a, it, it's a simple idea. Every business around the world, every organisation has a strategy a nation needs one too. A plan, a framework, a compass that acts as a guide for everything we do. Making clear what is mission critical for my government and what isn't. A clarity that will ruffle feathers across Whitehall and beyond. But one that is necessary. Necessary to build Britain's long-term strength. Necessary to galvanise action for change across the country necessary because of what it can give to businesses, families and to working people. Certainty and change, stability and success, a plan for today and a more secure future. And from this, something even more precious. A Britain once again on the front foot, with a sense of hope, of possibility, of ambition. A Britain that gets its future back.
five national missions, each one laser targeted on the complex problems that drive our crises, the root causes that demand new thinking, new solutions born in all parts of the country, new ways of harnessing the ingenuity that's all around us. Each mission will come with clear, measurable outcomes, ambitions that won't be overtaken by the future, that raise our sights and, at first glance, seem too bold, invite a, a sharp intake of breath, a question, can this really be done? And then, when the doubts begin to subside, a new emotion and a new determination. Why not Britain? Uh, let, me, let me give you an example. Zero carbon British electricity by 2030. A huge goal which will allow us to accelerate to net zero. Make no mistake, this goal would turn Britain into a clean energy superpower. It will put us ahead of any major economy in the world. That's a sharp intake of breath, by the way. And look, I'm already talking to CEOs, investors, entrepreneurs, unions, energy workers about how we get this done. The conversation always starts with a shake of the head. Uh, this is a bit much, Kia. Clean energy by 2030, that's going to be going some. But when I tell them, here's the ambition, here's the plan, and here's the opportunity for you, there is a powerful urgency to make it happen. But it will only happen with the right building blocks, cheaper bills, real energy security, independence from tyrants like Putin, and an industrial strategy that can win the race for jobs in the green industries of the future. Now, each of our five missions will contain this formula, a measurable goal, the building blocks of a clear strategy, and the first steps of a credible long-term plan. First steps like the insulation of 19 million homes, like training for people to be heat pump fitters, builders, engineers, electricians, like GB Energy, a new British company that will supercharge our drive for cleaner energy and taken together lay a new foundation for prosperity in every community. Every community.